Hello and welcome to Affordable Housing Matters. I'm Norman Robinson. Economic and community development has blossomed on the east and west banks of Jefferson Parish. There are new shopping centers, restaurants, condo developments, and a whole lot more. And even in the midst of the pandemic, the parish has continued to grow, which has put an increased demand, as you might imagine, on housing. When we return, we will sit down with Parish President Cynthia Lee Shang to discuss her agenda as Parish President. Don't go far. Jefferson Parish President Cynthia Lee Shang and her family have been an intricate part of the community of Jefferson Parish. Her grandfather's restaurant, House of Lee, was a staple in Metairie, as you know, in the 1950s. Her father, the late Sheriff Harry Lee, fought to protect the community of Jefferson for over 28 years. And now, after growing up, yep, she's all grown up, <laughs> and raising her own family, she holds the highest seat in the parish as parish president. Here to discuss how her administration has embraced and combated the COVID-19 pandemic, the parish's growing infrastructure, and the affordable housing issue, we welcome to affordable housing the Jefferson Parish President, the Honorable Cynthia Lee Shang. And thank you very much for taking thank time. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, well, you're welcome. We're glad to have you here because this is a very important subject. You're one of the most populated parishes um, in the state of Louisiana. And I know that uh, you've, you've been encumbered with COVID-19, uh, as we all have. In fact, I, I have personal experience with, with COVID-19. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I had it for 21 days, and it wow. was a, it was a nightmare. Yeah, this is tough. Yeah. And I know you've been dealing with, with uh, the, the issue in your parish since you have a lot of aging seniors uh, in your parish. And right now, I guess your, your primary focus is uh, getting everybody vaccinated. Absolutely. So how's that going? Absolutely, Norman. Well, you go back to our, the past year, you know, we were a new administration. Our council was new. We come on like a new team, looking forward yep. to all the projects. And then, you know, bam, on, on March 9th, um, it really hit us. And it's, it seems like it's been a roller coaster ride since then, just one thing after the, no, the other. So right now, um, we're in hopeful times. I mean, it's been very different from the way it's been this whole last year mm -hmm. um, with the vaccination efforts out in full scale. You know, um, I think now we're at a point where um, anybody who wants the vaccine has been able to kind of get a shot and we're turning the corner on our strategy. We're gonna still have large scale events. I mean, we had one of the largest events in the state with the vaccine fest, the 24 hour yes. festival with mm -hmm. Ostra, and that was mm -hmm. a great event. Um, probably over 5,000 shots given that day. Um, so we're going to turn our efforts in, and, and like I said, everybody who was waiting for eligibility probably was able to get the shot, or maybe it's just their work schedule, or they travel a lot, you know, their schedule weren't allowed, but I think if it was a priority in your life to get it, you've been able to access a shot. And so now we really need to get to that next level of pe person who is on the fence about taking it, mm -hmm. or has doesn't have a comfort level, has that vaccine hesitancy, and really getting out to where people live, getting bringing it to them in their community, um, bringing it to a church or to a restaurant that they're familiar going to and the familiar with the people around them and watching mm -hmm. the people around them get the shot is the next strategy that we're implementing. Have you figured out how you're going to do that? How are you going to implement that strategy? So Louisiana Department of Health looked at 
uh, crunched the data for us mm -hmm. and is doing a pilot program with us, um, Louisiana Department of Health and Louisiana National Guard. Um, two zip codes are kind of came out right away, 70058 and 70062. So we're looking at the Harvey neighborhood and the Kenner south of I-10 area. Mm -hmm. And next week we'll be bringing two sites there, uh, Harvey Community Center on Tuesday and Thursday um, at the El Verbo Church um, in Kenner. Again, mm -hmm. bringing it to where people have been there before, people have had experience with, it's part of their everyday, you know, yeah. weekly uh, existence. And we'll continue to do that. We're also um, very concerned about people who are homebound or, um, you know, whether they're bedridden or just can't leave their home or need physical assistance to get someplace. So we have two other programs where we're actually going to go to somebody's house if you're homebound and give you the shot. And we'll, we'll use the Johnson & Johnson vaccine for that because that's the easiest. It's just the one shot. Mm -hmm. Or pick you up if you need help, whether you're a wheelchair or a cane or a walker, bring you to one of our partner um, clinics and then bring you back. Mm -hmm. So this is, again, the next strategy of what we're trying to get deeper into the community. Say, I, say I'm homebound or I'm a caretaker for a homebound person. How do I find, find out about these programs? Right. So you call 504-518-4020 mm -hmm. and you can get on the list. We're starting some of the homebound today. We already had, uh, we have over 140 people on the list and we're starting today in some areas and next week we'll be even, you know, doing bigger volumes of that. And just call and get yourself on the reservation list, and we'll come out to you uh, and give you the shot if you're homebound. And same number, uh, 518 4020, if you just in a wheelchair and you can't get out the house, but you just need that assistance, we'll use our community buses and we'll bring you um, to go get the shot. How much uh, uh, did this? The new stimulus package passed by the the the, the president and in, uh, in Congress. How much did that assist in providing resources and the um, and the funding? So that COVID stimulus, you know, Jefferson Parish. I don't know the final number yet. It, we still haven't received official word, but we'll get between 80 and 85 million for that project to be used on several initiatives. Mm -hmm. Whether it is the loss of revenues that we have sustained. Now our sales tax has done well, you know, surprisingly. Really? Sales tax has done well last year. You, the months that you would expect us to mm -hmm. be really hurt last year, March, mm -hmm. April, and May, we were down. I mean, some months we were down up to 20%. Mm -hmm. We came up in the summer, um, last summer, and then by the end of the year, we kind of were even a little bit higher than we were the year before. So sales tax has done well, which is an indication of our economy and the resilience of our economy, but sales tax only about 17% of our entire budget. So uh. we're really hurt on so many other revenue sources that we rely on. And so the stimulus package can fill that hole Plus all the expenses, I mean, all these vaccination efforts, really a lot of expenses we're incurring, um, you know, all the tents and all the labor and um, all those resources to fill that hole. But also what we're really excited about is it can be used toward infrastructure projects. And one thing in Jefferson Parish that we really need, we have aging, aging infrastructure. I mean, we're an old parish. Our water system was built in the 1930s. If you go to Jefferson Highway and see, you know, the waterworks plant, I yeah. call it the waterworks plant, um, it's... It's from the 1930s. If you take a tour of the building, it looks like you're going mm -hmm. back into the 1930s. So, um, and our sewer system is very old. So we'll be able to hopefully do take some of that money and really, uh, we've been good at band-aiding it, but you can only band-aid for so long. And uh, you can see we had a, a big sewer problem on West Napoleon. I, I saw that. I <laughs> yes. saw that. Is that what, were you able to band-aid it, or but were you able to, to repair it? We in are. This is how old the system is. They don't make that pipe anymore. It's a Price Brothers pipe, uh. so we have to get the the, per, the permanent fix fabricated right now. It's being custom made, and the temporary fix was had to be custom made as well. So oh it's it's like anything. The longer and older a system it is, the more it costs to maintain it, and as time goes, even more to maintain it. Right? Just the maintenance and the repair work is is very expensive for. Us. So we need a pipe replacement program. We've never really had a pipe replacement program like a, a scheduled pipe replacement program for for older pipes. We just fix it when they break. And that's not a public works is very critical to an, a community and that's not the position we so want to you, be. So you've got you've got a full plate of of, of issues uh, in in terms of the pa pandemic and in terms of of trying to um, to update the uh, the parish infrastructure infrastructure uh, so how, how how 
how, how do you sleep at night? <laughs> it's been, you know, it's been hard. I mean, um, it, it's especially this year, I think we were in the mode of running so fast mm -hmm. and it's hard to just regroup. And, and even when we started this year, there were a lot of initiatives. Our council offices as well had many projects. And I think everybody was like, we don't want to lose this year. We, we know mm -hmm. we still need to work on pandemic issues and, and the vulnerabilities that have surfaced from that. There's, that's a lot of future work for us to do. Um, you talk about broadband, we, we want to tackle that. You know, that mm -hmm. kind of came out from the pandemic. We realized that. Um, but uh, we don't want to lose this year like we lost it last year on very pressing issues um, that, that we would have faced last, we would have tackled last year. Mm -hmm. you know? And on top of all of this, there's, there's of course the, the affordable housing crisis. Absolutely. Absolutely. What kind of challenge are you facing in, in terms of trying to deal with that? You know, so that's one of the things with COVID, when, when COVID happened, you know, if anything would kind of keep me up at night, it's, it's the basic things, you know, when you're the parish president, like mm -hmm. the safety of your citizens is the thing, you know, is there people secured with their food source? Mm -hmm. and with their housing, you know, so many people um, losing jobs and not able to make rent payments. So um, right now we're in the process of doing a, a very large scale emergency rental program that came from COVID. You have to demonstrate mm -hmm. that because of COVID and because of some financial setback because of COVID, you're able to apply for emergency rental assistance. Um, we're doing that now. We've had over 2000 applications. Um, so that's that's been critical for us, you know, um, and, so, and so we're processing through those applications. But um, again, we talk about aging infrastructure. Well, the infrastructure mm -hmm. was built for the houses that were built. Yes. Um, and the houses are old. Um, mm -hmm. And we know, uh, we, we certainly know that our competitive edge in Jefferson Parish relies on things like schooling and infrastructure and housing and the attractiveness of housing and the ability to get into um, safe housing um, at an affordable price. Mm -hmm. And so um, we realize that 87% of our housing structures were built in the n before 1990, mm -hmm. um, only 13% since 1990. So we, we know that we have aging infrastructure and we're looking at ways to encourage people to go in and renovate and flip homes. Um, we started a neighborhood revitalization program and um, just at the end of last year, we, we cut the ribbon on a new home in Terrytown. Mm -hmm. And I think you know the history of Terrytown. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, I used to live there. Yeah, so yeah. Terrytown was an incredible community. Mm -hmm. We would drive by and we, we really, one of, the, one of the initiatives of the neighborhood revitalization program was to do a pilot program. And I used to drive around and like, where can we do this? You come at Terrytown, the, the structure of that is just so perfect. You know, all the homes back then, you didn't buy in the initial house, but when that neighborhood was developed in 1960, it was kind of like pick your lot and pick your model home and all the variations of that home. Mm -hmm. And it was an incredible community for new families to go to. Mm -hmm. Well, now those homes are older, um, still such a strong community for us, but an incredible place to say, wow, all these homes are built, kind of constructed the same way and they need renovation. and. This is a great place. It's it's so uh, centrally located. It's easy to get to New Orleans. It's easy to get to. True. It's Oakwood Mall's Not right far there. From the Crescent City connection. Exactly, yeah. and all the renovations, all the initiatives we're doing around Oakwood Mall, around Berman and Carroll Sue, Terry Parkway, um, homes. Um, it's really an exciting time. So we took a piece of property. Our partner's been Jedco, Noel, um, the Home Builders Association has been huge, the Real Estate mm -hmm. Association. We've had a lot of partners, the Jefferson Parish Finance Authority. Tulane School of Architecture did a study of that whole neighborhood. The architecture in that neighborhood is wonderful. It's the, you know, that mid-century look. Yeah. And we just renovated a home and mm -hmm. put it on the market. It sold right away to what we wanted, a, a, a young, a young family moving to Jefferson Parish. Yeah, that's right. You're, you're trying to attract um, a younger generation to to the parish because I I think I read, I think it might have been a couple of years ago that uh, the parish, especially on the East Bank, was losing residents to the North Shore. Mm -hmm. So I guess you're trying to combat that, and at the same time when you're trying to trying to accommodate people who need affordable housing. Absolutely, and if you look at, if you really drill down to Jefferson Parish, we're very good at having a lot of housing for, let's say, that affordable housing, first-time home builder, mm -hmm. you know, home buyer. Mm -hmm. um, New Orleans has a lot of um, multi-unit. Um, the, the North Shore has a lot of, what you'd say, 
um, very expensive homes. So sure. it's harder to get into a starter home in the North Shore, I'm told, than mm -hmm. Jefferson is a great community to get into that first time home buyer. Um, Kind of, kind of home at that price point. So we are, we are doing that, you know. And we know, look, you have to be able to attract the new families. I mean, that's what feeds your school system, sure. your library, your gyms, your retail. Um, you always have to be competitive on that front. And the housing's there. We don't have much open land left in Jefferson Parish, you know, uh, in this whole region where mm -hmm. we're really landlocked. Um, and so we need to take what we have and just put a new idea on it or a renovation on it. Or the next project with this with this neighborhood revitalization group that we're doing is to take, um, um, you know, an existing home and remodel it. So this, this first house that we did, um, we took an empty lot and just built a new home that matched the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So we want to show, and we're going to share all the details on the cost level and how we how we did this to really entice the private sector, um, the contractors and the architects and the builders to take a look at that neighborhood. How do you how do you see this uh, influencing the poverty l level in in the parish? So I think what's critical is that the type of home this is would be a first time home and we're looking at grant opportunities. I mean, people want, you know, you always say that and I, I tell my kids that I rented for a, a very long time. Mm -hmm. But you know, you want to try to get into home ownership because it's your investment into yourself. It's it builds your, wealth. It, it yes. builds wealth and it's mm -hmm. your investment. I mean, you know, once you pay that rent, um, you've lived there and then it's gone you know mm -hmm. there's nothing to show for it right so um, it's critical that people you know and and that's what you want we do have programs to um, through the finance authority to try to get people into the homes for the first time you know um, low interest you know kind of loans but it's it's critical to try to build up enough to get that you know down payment to get that mortgage to start building that well so I'm so I'm one of your citizens I'm, I live in the in the parish of Jefferson and I'm watching you now and I'm thinking madam president where do I go to get this 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 uh, this assistance for affordable housing right where, where do I turn so if you go to the finance authority we have opportunities there and there are different kind of programs and look they change because it depends on the interest rates and those kind of things but we do push those out you have to you have to meet eligibility categories but there are those programs there and look I think you know with COVID we we we're putting a lot of of these resources that we're getting into those programs so maybe if it lost funding before and you looked at it you need to go look at it again because we're kind of able to fill up a lot of those pots again with some of this COVID money that's coming down. We've talked about the affordable housing uh, issue for for people who are looking to, to get in home and make in homes to make the transition from rental but there are a lot of people who are still renting and you said you had 2,000 people already signed up for the emergency rental assistance program. Yes. 2,000 um, applications. Wow. Yes. Oh my God. And so how does that program work? So that program came down from stimulus money. You had to have been to show, you have to demonstrate that you had some kind of um, financial instability based on COVID. So we, we've had emergency rental programs before, but this is specifically COVID related. Uh, it came through with the, with the last package. And so um, the payment will be made to the landlord, mm -hmm. but you just have to demonstrate, you know, that you have that and will, and you have to have, um, I think, not more than 80% of the median average income. So there are some income criteria that you have to meet. Um, and then, you know, landlords can apply for this as well. So we opened it first to um, the tenants and then we opened it to the landlords, but the payment would be toward the landlord. And it also covers if your utility is in the mix with your rent, oh, really? it covers that piece too, if it's in the mix with your rent, yes. Now, how, is this, is this um, a retroactive? How far back yes. does, does it? It, it goes back since when COVID started and you don't have to have, you don't have to live in that place for a certain period of time. It's, it's kind of a very open program. If it's really just kind of COVID related. If you um, were facing homelessness or you were facing eviction or mm -hmm. you just were delay, delinquent in your rent because perhaps you lost your job because of COVID. This is that kind of money. This is that grant that we're getting. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about homelessness in, in, in the parish. Mm -hmm. How are you dealing with that and, and what's the problem like? Well, we're you know, homelessness is a tough issue. We're fortunate that we don't have the issue that Orleans Parish yeah. has to that to that level. Um, and we, we, we look at it, but I mean, as we know, it's a mental health issue as well. Homelessness mm -hmm. is a mental health issue as well. We see it more on the West Bank side um, near the, near the um, West Bank Expressway. And so we work, we have um, a coalition of, we work with the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office and, you know, um, 
uh, the Jefferson Parish Human Services Authority to to look at this issue. But um, it's it's a, a tough issue, and there are a lot of issues around that. And it's it's one of those things where. Um, that's another thing as a community is you just need to get people mm -hmm. stable, whether you have to tackle the mental health issue, whether you have to ta tra perhaps tackle an abuse issue or just a, a, a mere shelter issue. Yeah, that's the thing that people don't see. They think of homelessness as just being without shelter, but there are a lot of mitigating um, issues. It in, is a involved. complex, very complex issue. Yeah. Yes, yes. And then, you know, there's people who are homeless for a long period of time, and there's people who fall in and out of homelessness, and there's people who have to sleep in their car, so yeah. that's just on the verge of being homeless. I mean, if you, that is also not uh, stable housing if you're having to sleep True. in your car. Yeah. You know, so there are a lot of issues around that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so where do I go if, if I'm just an elderly person and I'm just, total, I'm, I'm just struggling to hang on? And, and, I, and I really need some, some assistance, not only just in covering my house, uh, covering the housing costs, or, or uh, I need I need food, you know I I need uh, I need transportation, I I, I need uh, help with my utilities, I need mm -hmm. help with my with my medical issues. What do I turn to in the parish, um, so, Madam President? So we have the Jefferson Council on Aging, which looks at mm -hmm. that. But as you say that issue, this is one of the issues we wanted to tackle because you mm -hmm. talked about seniors as right. a whole, but you mm -hmm. mentioned you know, rent or utility or all these issues. And we're an aging parish in Jefferson Parish, we know that, we're, we're mm -hmm. one of the older parishes. Um, one of the things that we're gonna tackle is if you, for government, you always have to look at the funding source because the programs are attached to that. We're very, very fragmented with the senior services that we provide. You have the mm -hmm. Jefferson Council on Aging. Um, we have uh, golden age programs out of our recreational centers. We have um, our Citizens Affairs does uh, our, our senior community centers. We have programs through our JeffCap programs. So it's very fragmented. Mm -hmm. And I've always said we can serve our senior population better if we kind of get a grip and can deliver services in a more um, strat strategic way mm -hmm. um, and this is one of the things that you have to do but when you're looking at funding in government it's tough because you're looking at funding sources that you just can't flip that's one of the good things about Jefferson Parish it's if it comes from a millage or if it comes from you know a grant program you just can't flip it which is good for transparency mm -hmm. a little inflexible when you're just trying to get aid out there you know, so that is certainly one of the issues that we, we want to look at. Now, are all of these agencies, you have a bunch of them in, in, in the parish. You know, you have Jeff Cap, you have ERAP. Uh, all of these agencies, are they, are they funded um, individually or are they fund, uh, does the funding come through the parish, your office? It, that is the, the mix. I mean, you know, a lot of this COVID money comes from the federal government. Some mm -hmm. money comes from the federal government to the state, then to us, and it's in all different departments. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, that is the difficulty of administering these programs, and that most uh, we have directors do. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about how, how you get your arms around all of that. And I think and that's the difficulty because you'll have some programs we'll, we'll handle in our community development program or some will handle in our Jeff Cap program. Some of them come through different, you know, um, you might get um, help from Housing and Human Services or you might get help through GOSEP or it's just many different agencies at different levels of government and that really um, makes it a little bit more difficult for us to do that. You know, it, it tends to be you have to kind of stay in your own lanes and each each program has different rules attached to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I want to go back to the um, the affordable housing um, project that you started. Uh, or I should n not call it a project, a campaign that you started in uh, in Terrytown. Of course, that's on the west bank of, mm -hmm. of Jefferson Parish. What 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 kind of, of of assistance or programs are you planning for the east bank? So this program started when I was uh, on the council in, in, in district um, as a councilwoman. And then um, when I got to be at large, um, I, I showed it to our councilman at large, Ricky Template at the time. He was all yes. in. So he mm -hmm. knows the Terrytown area. He put up some money. Now you have Councilman Edwards, who's district one, involved in it as well. So it really did start in that Terrytown area. But the other council members are really looking at it closely. Mm -hmm. I know they want it in their district. So yeah. we're, we're looking at the pilot. And really, that's what a pilot's doing, is just trying to come up with a model mm -hmm. where you can just say, this works, this didn't work, and then let's pop it over to another section of the parish. So we really will look at that. But it was clever. It was something, you know, people think, well, you just build a house. But it was very complicated for us because 
in government we don't build houses. Right. So a lot of our effort on this was just how to make this happen the right way through mm -hmm. a lot of different agreements, through a lot of, you know, and we realized we, when we enlisted the home builders help, um, and they have Noel, their nonprofit, um, we ran it through them. We ran it through the finance authority, mm -hmm. so we borrowed money for it. Um, Noel oversaw the project, and then we put it out on the market. We made a little money, and that will flip over to um, putting into a new lot. So, um, but it was difficult for us to figure that out because as you talk about, we have to follow rules and yeah. we don't build a house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this is not what we do. Um, but it's necessary because if you're going to be strategic as a parish, housing is critical. And then I said, well, we need to build a house just to kind of give that spark in that neighborhood to say, look at what can be done. And hey, mm -hmm. contractors, look how you can make money. You can start flipping homes. Or people who live in the house saying, wow, look at that beautiful house. Maybe I can renovate my own home mm -hmm. and just get it started. That's what we're trying to do. You, you, you talked about contractors just a few seconds ago. That brings to mind the public-private partnership. Um, how is that going for you? Um, are you optimistic? Is it challenging? Is it sustainable? This is something that's kind of fairly new to government. You see it being brought on um, at the federal level, especially with mm -hmm. with our with our all of our um, levy systems and all of that, you, they've used it on really big projects. But this is something that we did kind of with the nonprofit side. But you could mm -hmm. kind of say it's a public-private partnership. Um, you're going to start seeing more of that because I think. Um, it's opportunities and, mm -hmm. and sometimes government does things well but sometimes government needs help from the private sector to know what's the cutting edge thing to do. Sure. Um, so you'll you'll see a lot of people talking about that and I think that is sort of the future in government is being a partner and not um, look you know government can get a bad rap saying it's a bureaucracy and in many ways it is um, and that this is an injection of fresh ideas when you, you partner in the, with the private sector. Well thank you very much for joining thank us. You, uh, thank our, you. Our, our time is up you know, we could talk for hours. Absolutely, <laughs> on a lot of important topics. Yeah, no question about it. Yes. And you're smiling, and we want to see you keep smiling. So best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're here. very welcome. Thank you. All right. We would again like to thank Jefferson Parish President, uh, the Honorable Cynthia Lee Shang, for joining us on today's program. And if you, by the way, would like to watch or rewatch this or any other past programs of Affordable Housing Matters, please go to WLAE.com and click on the programming link. There, we have all of our past programs available to view at your leisure. I'm Norman Robinson, and we'll see you next time on Affordable Housing Matters.